Hello everyone and welcome. Eliyahu here and I just wanted to make a quick video for you to share a couple of things that I've been noticing on the web. It seems like some people are promoting their own agenda or an agenda that's contrary to Yahuwah's Torah. Now these people are speaking up and saying that they're Torah observant and that they follow Torah when actually they're speaking out of a Biblios which is a Grecian counterfeit of the original Hebrew Torah. Some people even go so far as to say that uh, they're speaking out of the King James Version and instead of saying what we know to be written in the text of the J-E-S-U-S, -S, they might use a term or a name of Yeshua. Now anytime that you have a canon or a Bible or anything like that to where you have to change what is actually written and say what is to be the truth, then that book or that canon is in error. And if you have a book or a canon in error, why are you still using it? Well, some people say, oh, that's all semantics, you know, in translation. Well, Trinity, Ishtar Day, Souls Day, the Equinox, and some of the traditions that are applied to that same canon by the Council of Nicaea with Constantine and his creed, well, that's not necessarily Torah, and that's not necessarily the Hebrew Israel covenant. What I have to say is that there's some confusion and truth going out in the world today, and there's only one canon that has proven the test of time, which includes the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. So, if we consider that the Dead Sea Scrolls are hundreds of years old and the Torah was found to be accurate by these documents, except for maybe some minor punctuation, you can't do that with your Hellenized Greek version. You can take a look and there's translations for every religion. Every religion has their own book. Now, Southern, Southern Baptist, theirs is the King James. And you'd be hard-pressed to try to pry that King James out of their hands and give them a Tanakh. It's something that's going to have to be done. When the people go into the Promised Land at the second exodus, there's going to be a rod of inspection that everybody has to go under. And not everybody's going to... So, what does he want? What did he originally want? What he originally wanted was a kingdom of priests. He wanted a Malek Kohanim, Kohen priest. And his son, our atonement, because we played the harlot and we went after other mighty ones, and we are exiled after the split of the northern and the southern kingdom, northern being Israel, the southern being Yahuda, we were all exiled because we broke covenant. We broke the covenant made at Sinai. And the only way that we could be restored to that blood covenant is somebody had to die. Somebody who was a perfect atonement without spot or blemish. That somebody was Yahusha. He was our atonement. And he walked Torah perfectly. He understood it perfectly. He was not the Father, but he and the Father had the same understanding. They were Echad in their thinking. And I want to be Echad with the Father and Yahusha in that thinking. I want to be a chad and part of that same covenant. Under the covering, the protection, the blessings, and the healing and the provision of Yahuwah. So that's my goal. I hope to be a Kohen someday and to serve under the Kohen Gadol, Yahusha, forever. So his Melchizedek priesthood, that priesthood that's going to last forever, and I'm not sure about the Levitical priesthood, if it's going to be done away with, or if it's going to also be something that's established and goes on forever. I, I don't see it in the scripture. I don't know. I would suspect that it's going to go back to the original plan that Yahuwah had at Sinai and become the Melchizedek priesthood. But because of the harlotry of the golden calf, well, there had to be an immediate way of atonement. And animal sacrifices was it until the coming of Yahusha, our Redeemer, not Mashiach. If you take a look at Isaiah 
chapter 43 and verse 11, it says very clearly, Yahuwah speaking here, she says, I, even I, Yahuwah, alone is Mashiach. Your translation might say saving, Savior, or something like that. But basically, the word in Hebrew, the word used is Mashiach. I, Yahuwah, am the only Mashiach. Deny that. Without a translation, I'm talking about something that's been proven over hundreds of years, and the writings of the prophet Isaiah is exactly the same. You can't prove that in the Greek. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very concerned about some of the deceptions out in the world today, but I want to keep the communication lines open. I'd appreciate it very much if you would share this message, that you would subscribe to my channel, and that you would comment below. I'll do my very best to answer and respond to every comment that's given and try to show some proof, some resources, and some truth. Yahoo is truth, not my own. And I won't be referring you to any Grecian scripture. I'll find the Hebrew Torah of the situation and give you that resource. And Yahuwah's pure language and his clean lip. Uh, he told us how we could be defeated at Sinai. He said these people, they are united in speech. And they can do anything they put their mind to. So he also tells us how we could be defeated by confusing our language. The Greek is one language, the Hebrew is another. And any time that we each have our own language, we're defeated, even before we get started. Yahuwah tells us that we have to agree on a single language. He tells us his pure and clean lip in Zephaniah 3.9. His pure and clean lip is the Hebrew. It's what been come to be called the Hebrew. It was the word and the language of the Father, and we have given it the name and the title of Hebrew, but that is his pure and clean Kadosh set apart and sanctified language for his pure and clean Kadosh set apart and sanctified covenant people. So we can be defeated, and the master of deception, the master of lies, have learned that tactic. And the more that he can keep us in different languages, different translations, and everybody having their own truth, and truth is relative, and, well, there is no truth in that situation. It falls apart. But there's only one truth, and that truth is the Father's truth. It's in his word, in his Torah, and it's spoken by his prophets in his names that have been proven to be accurate in their prophecy. No Greek scholars, no great philosophers, no theologians, no mythology, no doctrine of men, no tradition of men. The Constantine Creed with their Trinitarian doctrine, with their Ishtar Day, with their Souls Day, their Equinox celebrations, their translations of the Pentateuch, the Septuagint, and your Bible, is all a deception and it's a way that he can defeat you because you don't have Yahuwah's Hebrew Torah. I do this in the Ahab of Yahuwah which is to keep, to guard, to protect and to provide for. It has nothing to do with a warm and fuzzy kindness. The kind of Ahab that Yahuwah has, it requires action and responsibility to be able to share his truth. It has nothing to do with tolerance of lawlessness and immorality or walking outside of his covenant. We have to keep it kadosh in the camp. That means your house, your home, your car, your land, and your walk. If anybody tells you anything different, it's a lie. Yahuwah tells us we have to be kadosh in the camp. I made another video, One Truth. Check it out. See more details about this same subject. But for now, I want to remind you, keep it Hebrew, keep it Torah, and keep it Yah made.
Bye now.